The residents of Volcano Manor are a bunch of weirdos who hate the Earth Tree and want you to kill a load of innocent NPCs. Sounds like the kind of people I want to be friends with. I'm Jamie Latour, and this is how to find and murder all of the Volcano Manor targets in Elden Ring. There are two ways to reach Volcano Manor. You can make your way through the Mount Gelmir region of the map, or alternatively, you could just find Raya in Lyurnia of the Lakes, buy her necklace back from the Blackguard over at the Boil Prawn Shack, and then receive an invitation to the manor. Then, when you arrive at the Altus Plateau, you could find Raya again at the Lux Ruins or the Grand Lift of Dectus, depending upon how you got there, and simply speak to her to get magically whisked away to the manor. Upon making it to the manor, touch the Site of Grace and talk to the creepy lady named Tanith on her throne and her silent and posing bodyguard. She'll basically tell you that the Erd Tree, the Two Fingers, and all this Grace stuff are a load of malarkey. Malarkey, she says, and she'll invite you to join the Volcano Manor family. It's like being a member of a very special country club, only instead of golf, we assassinate people. Also, if you head upstairs, for some reason you'll be invaded by this guy named Inquisitor Giza. Don't know why this happens, but you can kill him to acquire the Giza's Wheel, which is essentially the whirly gig from Bloodborne. With your new Volcano Manor membership, you'll get a drawing room key, which will open up a few locked doors down this hallway. Inside one of the rooms will be Raya and her terrible posture. Bernal, who's the guy who sells Ashes of War at the War Master's shack, only now he's all mean and wearing evil armor, and Dialos, who has given up on his quest for revenge and joined the manor instead because he is very easily manipulated. In this room on this table will be two items, a letter from Volcano Manor that will give you your first assassination target, and a requisite finger which lets you invade and kill other players. This place is fun. Now it's time to be Elden Ring's Agent 47. Whenever you read a letter from Volcano Manor, a red mark will appear on your map indicating the location of your target. Our first target is Old Knight Istvan, who was someone you could summon for the boss fight inside the coastal cave. Well, sorry Istvan, but a volcano house has told me to kill you, so I must oblige. The easiest way to reach this guy is to warp to the War Master's Shack site of Grace, and then head north towards that coliseum that nobody can get inside of. You'll see a red invasion sign on the ground, interact with that, and you'll invade Istvan's world. Istvan has a big sword that can perform the Gravitas Ash of War, which can pull you in close to get smacked around. He's quick and he can hit hard, but otherwise, this is a pretty standard NPC fight. All the old reliable standbys will work here, like inflicting bleed or using magic, or in my case, just hitting him really hard with a colossal sword. Defeating Istvan will earn you his scaled armor set, which is pretty good armor with a nice cape on the back. Two other things to keep in mind whenever you defeat a Volcano Manor target is that you'll receive a Rune Arc and a Furl Calling Finger Remedy like you would from any successful invasion, and after the target is dead, you need to return to the Volcano Manor and talk to Tanith to get an additional reward. In this case, for killing Istvan, you'll receive the Magma Shot Sorcery. Now head back to the drawing room to find your next letter that will give you your next target, who is some rando named Riley the Idol. This target it can be found along the path that leads to the Shaded Castle. Probably the fastest way to get here is by warping to either the Old Altus Tunnel or the Shaded Castle Rampart Site of Grace. You'll find Riley's invasion sign right about here, and now let's go killing. Upon invading Riley's world, he is anything but idle. He'll come down from over the hill and start swiping at you with his dagger, which can inflict Scarlet Rot if you're not careful. His crossbow can fire bolts that can inflict Scarlet Rot as well, so watch out for that rot. He's very fast, so spellcasters may have some trouble with this guy. However, while he's quick, he's not super durable, and some good melee swings should be enough to take him down. Defeating Riley will earn you the Creptus' Vile Talisman and some Black Key Crossbow bolts. Return to Tanith and she'll reward you with the Serpent Bone Blade for killing this idle idiot. Afterwards, she'll spout off some more lore and mention the Volcano Manor's Lord, who she says you may get to meet if you keep offing folks for her. Now, technically, there's only one more target left, 
However, there are two additional contracts that you can take. You see, Patches is here. I probably should have mentioned that at some point. He's also a member of the Volcano Manor, but in typical Patches fashion, he's too lazy or scared to go kill his target. So he passes his letter off to you. And once you see who it is, you kind of get why he didn't want to do it. Because the target is Great Horned Friggin' Tragoth. Oh, he's cool and he has a big hammer. Sadly, as much as I love this chonky boy, he must die. He's actually located right at the Magma Worm Makar site of Grace, which is where he helped us defeat Makar all that time ago. Ah, the feels, the feels. After you load into his world, Tragoth will start firing crossbow bolts at you. He'll then try to smash you with his massive hammer, and occasionally he might attempt to butt stomp you. He hits like a truck, but all that strength comes at the expense of his speed. He's easy to get behind and backstab or hit with ranged attacks. Take out our former bulky best friend, God, this sucks. And you'll get the Bull Goat Armor Set, which is heavy as hell. But if you got the equip load for it, this is some of the most protective armor in the entire game. Now it is I who is the Chonky Boy. Tell Patches that you killed Tragoth and he'll be surprised because he always underestimates how awesome we are. He says that he'll inform Tanith. Now rest at the sight of Grace, go back to him, and demand your reward that Patches was obviously trying to keep for himself. He'll reluctantly hand over the Magma Whip Candlestick as payment for doing his dirty work. As for the other optional contract, it comes from Bernal. He'll actually give us two targets, Vargrim the Raging Wolf and Errant Sorcerer Wilhelm. These two guys can be found within the capital city of Lindale. They're pretty far into the city in a very interesting area with some intriguing lore implications. But we'll save that info for another video. For now, get to this point on the map, enter the familiar building, and you'll find the red invasion sign right here. Upon invading, you'll discover that this is a tag team match, as Bernal will be fighting alongside you. The best way to handle this fight is to take out Wilhelm first. He'll fire off a bunch of sorceries at you, but if you can catch up to him, you can just beat him up with your melee weapon to make short work of him. That leaves Bernal and Vargrim to fight, and Vargrim does have some black flame attacks that can be deadly. But with the two of you standing against him, it should be pretty easy to eliminate this Raging Wolf to score the victory. You get the Raging Wolf armor set upon returning to your world, and Bernal will give you the Gelmir's Fury Sorcery as a reward for helping him out. The final actual Volcano Manor target is given to you via a red letter and the person that we're killing is someone named Juno Hoslo. Hey, that's the same last name as you, Dialos. Oh, that's probably not good. To get to Juno, you need to make it all the way to the snowy mountaintops of the Giants region. The invasion sign will be near the Shack of the Lofty, which is also close to a bunch of monkey men and bats who are just fighting it out. Invade his world, and you'll get the Hoslo's Oath gesture right away. He's called the Knight of Blood, which makes sense since he power stands his whips that do bleed damage. Getting whipped a few times will likely lead to your hemorrhage meter filling up and you dying. He also does the Bloodhound step dodge, which can make him very hard to hit if you're a melee character. However, ranged characters may have an easier time, especially if you could just fling sorceries like Rock Sling at him. Man, Rock Sling rules. Bleed damage and jump attacks are also highly effective. Hit him when he's jumping, healing, or stupidly running at you, and you should be able to take down Dialos' relative. Maybe don't tell Dialos about this. You'll score the Hoslo's armor set and Hoslo's pedal whip for killing Juno, and Tanith will give you the Taker's cameo talisman. She'll also tell you that you're finally ready to meet her lord, and she can teleport you to him. What is it with this place and people just having teleportation powers? This will put you just outside the boss wall where you could fight Prider Rikard, but that's a topic that we'll cover in another video. For now, 
you just scored a whole bunch of new weapons, sorceries, armor, and rune arcs, and all you had to do was murder a whole lot of innocent people. I'm so sorry, Trekoth. For more Elden Ring news and guides, check out thegamer.com. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Thank <laughs> you.